into a bowl of <coughs> milk. Milk's a wee bit. I, I prefer Diet Coke. <laughs> milk or milk or Coke? Coke. I agree. Well, so I know it says. I'm sure it'll work. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure it'll work. So here we go. Right. You hold tight there, Ezra. So I know it says milk, but I'm just going to, I prefer Diet Coke. And it's the weekend, you're allowed fizzy drinks at the weekend. So here we go, a wee bit of Diet Coke. That is, let's see, and that's 330 milliliters. So it's around, around the right amount. So we'll put that in. Now, what says the next? Um, add the Angel Delight dessert mix and whisk until light and creamy. Right, here it goes. Now, don't worry, I will take it off, you yes, when I'm whisking. I'll not cover you with the stuff. Okay, and I know we're not allowed food and drink in the church sanctuary. I do understand this, um, but we'll be very, very, very careful. Right? Where do we see? Right, okay. Right, we'll put that in there. Right, Ezra? Now, this is where I get to look like the perfect example of the domestic goddess. Right, here we go. Um, maybe I'm just not whisking enough. Light and fluffy. Um, right, okay, just keep going a wee bit more. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. It's not, what, what colour? Take that packet there, Ezra. Pass it over to Jasmine. Jasmine, what colour is it supposed to be? Like a light pink. All right. Okay, this is looking not very pink. It's really not. Right, I've got an idea. Hold that, Ezra. Right, okay, so... In school, if we're trying to make something a wee bit pinker, we put red paint in it. So I think, we can't put paint in that. So I think this might make it a wee bit more red. Do you think this would work to make it a wee bit more red, girls? Would this make it a wee bit more red? We'll put a wee bit in, we'll put a wee bit in. No, Andrew said he would try it for us for a birthday dessert. Here we go, right, now, right. put that in there, right. Give us it, Ezra, because I definitely don't want this mixture all over you. It'd be quite a crack if I dropped this now, wouldn't it? No, but it was... Um, no. Uh, is that the right colour, Jazz? No. Looks a wee bit dirty now. It looks so... Mm, no, right, okay, hold that again, Ezra. You're doing a great job there, right? It looks a wee bit dirty. I think we need to clean it up. <laughs> Well, this says that it does the job. This would clean it up a wee bit. It'll be all right, Andrew. Everything here. There's no, nothing poisonous. Don't worry. This is, this is your birthday dessert. <laughs> this is as good as it gets in our house. Right? Ready? This will do the trick now. Exactly. I, like it. I know, I know. I'm being very irresponsible. Right? Where do we see? Let's see. Right. It smells good. Um, is that the right colour? No, is it not matching at all? It's supposed to be nice and like a light pink. Do you want to try it? Just a wee bit. Okay, I think, I think, um, I think this isn't going to work, is it? Would you like this for your dessert today? No, I'll try it. Are you sure? Are you sure? Where did it go wrong? What, where did it go wrong? Well, what did I do wrong to start with? I put in co instead of. Hmm, what did I not follow? I didn't follow the instructions. Sure, I didn't. I didn't follow the instructions. And you know what? Let me say this again. If I had maybe followed the instructions, things might have turned out the way they were supposed to turn out. Isn't that right? And do you know sometimes we're not very good at following instructions? Do you know sometimes whenever, now you're maybe a wee bit young for this yet, but if you're going to cross the road and the traffic lights are away up that way and you think, I could just run across there. But mummy or daddy or granny or granda said, use the traffic lights. Why are they telling you to use the traffic lights? Ezra. To keep you safe. To keep you safe. Not to spoil all your fun but to keep you safe so that you don't get hit by a car. And do you know, I'm going to tell you a wee quick story. When I was a little bit older than you, I was away on a family holiday and there was a big swimming pool and it was class. And there was a slide that went down into the swimming pool. And all these other boys and girls were going down the slide head first. And I thought this would look really good. But my mummy and daddy said, Lindsay, 
Do not, whatever you do, do not go down that slide head first into the pool. It's really dangerous. Guess what I did? I did. And do you know what? I thought I had got away with it. But when I went down the slide head first, I hit, my head hit the bottom of the pool, which was really dangerous. I shouldn't have done it. And my head hit the bottom of the pool. And I thought, oh, I felt a wee bit, oh, but I thought I'll be okay. I'll be quiet, but I can't tell my mummy and my daddy what I've just done because they'll shout at me because they told me not to do it. So I walked back over to where they were sitting reading a book. And I came over and Dad said to me, Lindsay, did you go down the, the slide head first? No, no, no. And he says, well, why are there tile imprints on your forehead? <laughs> caught out because I had done it and if I had followed my mommy and daddy's instructions I wouldn't have got hurt and I could have got hurt a lot worse but you know what boys and girls where did I sell it here we go this in here and there's a big bible here this is our instruction book for life what is this what is this that I have here it's our Bible, isn't it? And this is full of instructions because God's word is a lamp onto our feet and a light to our path. That's what it tells us because God made us. He created us. So he knows exactly what we should do to lead a joyful and a happy life. He knows what's best for us, doesn't he? And like our angel delight, the maker of the angel delight knew what it should turn out to be like. But you know, I did my own thing. Because sometimes we just do what we like to do, don't we? Sometimes we're very good at just, oh, well, I wanted a different way. I wanted Coke, but it was supposed to be milk. And sometimes we know what we should do and we read the instructions, but we just do our own thing. And this morning I want us to remember how important God's instruction manual is to our lives and how it's so important that if we're not sure what to do, or we're in a wee bit of a quandary that we turn to God's word or we ask our mummies or daddies or a Christian friend um, what they think would be good for us to do in a situation. Will you remember that for me? That the Bible is God's instruction book and it is so good for us to live our lives by. Now this morning we're going to sing a wee song and I am going to get well rid of the uh, mixture in case we end up putting it on the floor. So... This morning we're going to sing a song um, and it's all about our Bible. I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E. Have you ever done that one before? No, have you not? So for the actions, we just put our hands out for our Bible. Can you do that? So I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E and then we'll point to it. This is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone. It tells me how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know and our God knows so our God knows exactly what I need so I remember this and then I think you'll remember the chorus yeah let's go so we'll put it on and we'll all stand up the big people will help us with the words and us guys at the front we can do the actions and you can definitely mute me now uh, Wilson <laughs> please do Says to me, tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how JSUS can down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door.
few before you go. Okay, so let's just start. You can stand up and we'll pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Bible. And we thank you that you know us so well as our creator and you love us and you want the best for us. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to follow your plan for our life, to follow your word and your advice and your guidance for our lives. Be with our young people and our children as they go and learn more about you and your plan for their lives, Father. And thank you so much for them. Thank you bringing them to us each week. And we thank you that they are so precious to us in our church family. Amen. Okay, good stuff. And I'll not make you eat any of that. <laughs> So let's all stand together again and sing There Is a Hope. morning everybody uh, thank you for your uh, your good wishes um, it's good to it's good to be with you here uh, today we're going to turn to God's word um, we're going to pray and then we'll get into uh, his word 
Uh, we're going to turn to the book of James. We've been making our way through uh, this year. We're at the beginning of chapter 5 uh, this week, and then in two weeks' time, uh, we'll hopefully finish off uh, this, this letter there. So James, uh, chapter 5, and we're going to read the first 12 verses. It's entitled, the first section is entitled, Warning to Rich op Oppressors. Verse 1. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. Be patient, then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, Brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no, no, or you will be condemned. Ending uh, verse 12, when we pray uh, God's blessing on this reading from his word. As I sit there, we're going to pray uh, together, and we're just going to leave some time of quiet um, I'm just going to simply say some topics for us to bring our own prayers um, around the world and obviously closer to home as well. So let, let's pray together. Father God, it's our joy and our privilege to gather to worship you, to look at your word, to study your word, and to pray together. And so, Father, many of us here this morning are sitting and have many different people and situations we are praying for. And so, Lord, in the quiet now, we offer the prayers from our own hearts for these different uh, situations known to us and unknown as well. And so, Lord, we start with the world situation. <coughs> in our few moments of silence, we think of those trouble spots around the world, those places that are ravaged by war, famine, and disease. We mention them in our hearts now. We continue to pray, Lord, for our own government here in Belfast and in Westminster as well, Lord. Hear our prayers for our political leaders.
We pray for our, our own church here in High Street, remembering our sister churches in Balnacor, Bluestone, and Queen Street. And Lord, we thank you that you've called us to be part of uh, your church, the, the Methodist Church in Ireland, Lord. And we spend a moment thinking about our leadership. We remember our current president, the Reverend David Turtle, and our lay leader, Mr. Tom Wilson, as they finish their time in office in a few weeks' time. Lord, we ask that they can finish well. Thank you for how you've blessed the church through them. We remember our new uh, President, the Reverend John Alderdice, be with him and his family as he prepares to take office as well. For our new lay leader, Mrs. Elaine Barnett, Lord, be uh, with Elaine as she again prepares to take office. We, prepare, we remember our forthcoming conference as well in June. And Lord, pray that everything at that uh, conference will be honouring to you, Lord, for the different debates and for the different things that will come before conference as well, Lord. We long for your will to be done in our life. So help us and help the conference to come to good decisions, Lord. And finally, as we sit this morning here, Lord, each one of us has our own prayers. Many of us are praying for friends, family, neighbours, whoever it may be, Lord, who are ill, who have been bereaved, whatever it may be. So just for a further moment of quiet. We bring those people before you who need prayer today. Lord, those individuals we have mentioned before you, will you touch them by your spirit? Lord, whether it's healing or just simply a touch from you to let uh, them know that you are there, just do that for them, Lord. So thank you for the gift of prayer and thank you for interceding for others, Lord. Help us to continue to pray and to push into more of you. And as we turn to your word now, Lord, we ask that your spirit will be here and will be at work amongst us in our congregation. Thank you, it already has been, uh, but we pray for more, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a story told um, about a man who stopped at a supermarket uh, on the way home uh, from work to pick up a couple of items for his wife. John, if you get the sermon, thank you, brilliant. He wandered around aimlessly for a while, searching out whatever groceries he needed. Now, as is often the case in the big supermarkets, he kept passing the same shopper in one aisle, and then the next aisle, and then the next aisle. And so it was another father trying to shop with a totally uncooperative three-year-old boy in the trolley. The first time they passed, the three-year-old was asking over and over for a chocolate bar. Can I get a chocolate bar? Daddy, give me a chocolate bar. Chocolate bar. Give me a chocolate bar. And he heard the dad say, now, Billy, this won't take long. As they passed in the next aisle, the little child's pleas had increased by a few octaves. And the dad was still quietly saying, Billy, just calm down. We're going to be done in a minute. We're done in a minute. They passed near the dairy aisle, the child's now screaming uncontrollably. 
Dad was still keeping his cool. In a low voice, he was saying, Billy, settle down. We're almost out of here. The dad and the son reached the tills just ahead of our other observer. And he still gave no evidence of losing control. The boy by this stage is now kicking and screaming. And dad was very calmly simply saying over and over, Billy will be in the car park in a minute and everything will be okay. Now the other man was impressed beyond words. And after paying for his own groceries, he hurried to catch up with this amazing example of patience and self-control just to hear him say again, Billy, we're done. It's going to be all okay. And so he tapped the patient father on the shoulder and he said, Sir, I couldn't help but watch how amazed you were in there, how you handled little Billy there. You were amazing. But the dad looked at him with a real quizzical look on his face and he says, you don't get it, do you? I'm Billy. <laughs> <laughs> now, any of you with small children who have been grocery shopping knows exactly how that man probably felt. Uh, he did display great patience uh, amongst it all. And so for a few moments this morning, patience that's what we're looking at and we're really focusing in on verses 7 to 12 of what i read a few moments ago james james 5 <laughs> being patient particularly in our sufferings how can we become more patient in our lives now those of you who were here last week will remember that we ended chapter 4 by looking at god's will for our lives why we shouldn't boast about tomorrow because James reminded us that we're simply a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. In the first six verses I read of chapter 5, James once again goes full frontal attack, particularly on those in the church who were rich and corrupt. He lambasts those rich merchants, the, the, the Jerusalem elite who live in their big houses and get richer and richer while their attitude to God and the law is purely matter of fact. The Bible commentator Warren Wearsby writes this here, these men were rich and their riches were sinful. They were using their wealth for selfish purposes and were therefore persecuting the poor in the process. Hopefully you heard James's harsh, harsh words in verse 4. Look, the wages you feel to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. The hard-hitting stuff. And just imagine the reaction when this letter reaches those Christians in that small church in Jerusalem. But in verses 7 to 12, James turns his attention back once again to patience and perseverance. Patience and perseverance. There's an old Chinese proverb which says, a moment of patience can, present, can prevent a great disaster and a moment of impatience can ruin a whole life. So I suppose the question is, how can we become more patient and understanding in our lives? Especially in these days when patience, understanding and endurance are lagging in a lot of people. So in verse 7, be patient, then brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for his land to yield its valuable crop, waiting patiently for the autumn and spring rains. Now we here are still waiting on God's coming back 2,000 years later. The church in Jerusalem and the early church generally were convinced that Jesus' return was imminent. And yet nevertheless, here we are still waiting, still watching for the Lord's coming. Tom Wright, again, the Bible commentator, has written this here. Every generation of Christians has prayed that he would come as he promised. And so far, every generation has had to learn the lesson of patience. We are told to remain patient. 
But look at what James says next. He tells them an illustration that they would have known well. You can see that James has learned from Jesus' ministry with stories, parables, and illustrations. James tells them the farmer waits all year patiently for rain at the allotted times. Now we've had a lot of rain here, uh, there. But the farmer waits all year patiently waiting for the rain at the allotted times. But he, one thing he cannot do is hurry the process. But note here, he doesn't take the summer off, takes the welly bits off and puts his hard uh, earned hard work feet up. Um, he, he doesn't do that there. There's still much work to be done to ensure a good harvest. We know that. And so the lesson for us is simple. We must wait patiently for Jesus' return. We cannot make him come back any sooner. But while we wait, there's still much work to be done, that we can advance Christ's kingdom here on earth. Another Bible commentary puts it like this, both the farmer and the Christian must live their lives by faith, looking towards the future reward for their labors. Don't live as if Jesus will never return. Work faithfully to build the kingdom. The king will come when the time is right. The king will come when the time is right. Verse 8. You too be patient and stand firm, for the Lord's coming is near. Joyce Meyer, uh, who is a big um, evangelist in America, has said this here. Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. Mm, that's interesting. Patience is not the ability to wait, but to keep a good attitude while waiting. In verse 9, do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Now clearly from this verse we can see that grumbling was an issue for this church. Well, and we have to remember the context of this letter. Um, the church in Jerusalem, this little church, and the early church generally were suffering great persecution. Faced with threats from outside, Fear and anxiety are, of course, the inevitable consequence. And so, not too far behind comes grumbling. And you just have to look at our own world situation, particularly over the last couple of years. Fear, anxiety, grumbling doesn't come too far behind. Frank wasn't known for his patience. And he had absolutely no use for negative conversation. I wonder if anyone knows anyone like that. One day he got a call from his wife during a busy day at work. And she started talking slowly and didn't seem upbeat. And so Frank interrupted her and urged her to be brief and positive. And so she paused for a moment and then she cheerfully replied, I discovered the new airbags in her BMW work really well. <laughs> now Frank's wife didn't like grumbling. And Frank, we would argue, needs to learn a wee bit more patience there. James clearly tells the church, don't grumble or you will be judged yourself. Someone has said this here. If you knew Jesus was about to walk in here, how would you speak? of your fellow Christians. God has accepted you despite your many failings and weaknesses. Will you not accept your brother or sister in Christ in the same way? That's a challenge for us all, isn't it? In verse 10, James reminds his readers about the example of the prophets in the Old Testament. They suffered much and bringing God's message to the people of their day. Think of the sacrifices, the persecution, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Jonah, and so on, suffered during their life and their prophecies. They were speaking God's message, and this wouldn't have been lost on the church in Jerusalem that James wrote to. Remember, this is a primarily Jewish congregation, so mentioning the prophets was actually really quite a master stroke on James's part. 
remember what they, those guys faced during their lifetimes, both from unbelievers and also from people uh, who professed to follow God. Jeremiah was arrested as a traitor. Ezekiel and Daniel had their hardships, yet all stayed patient in the face of much suffering. James is essentially saying we need to do the same. You need to do the same as a church. Follow their example. Someone has said patience and perseverance surmount every difficulty. Patience and perseverance surmount every difficulty. And then James illustrates that point in verse 11 by name checking someone whose name is synonymous with patience and perseverance, Job. As you know, we count as blessed those who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Once again, the, the readers of this letter would have been well aware of Job and his sufferings. They had the book of Job as a record of what happened to him. But look and note what James concentrates on. Not what God uh, did to Job, what happened to Job, what the blessings Job received from God. James is showing his readers that this is how God will bless his faithful people in the end. Despite appearances now, persecution, difficulties, grumblings, whatever it may be, God will bless us in the end simply because he cares too much for all of us. He is, as it says there, full of compassion and mercy. And James very cleverly is paraphrasing a number of verses in scripture, but particularly Psalm 145 verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. As we persevere each day, we must thank God for his blessing and his protection, for his never-ending mercy, his lack of anger when we go against him. And so today, we thank him once again for his compassion and his love. There's a 13th century theologian called Meinster Eckhart, brilliant name, and he writes this here, you may call God love, you may call God goodness, but the best name for God is compassion. The best name for God is compassion. And so James finishes this section with verse 12. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no Otherwise, you'll be condemned. Now here, James is meaning those Jews who were part of the church who used oaths and swore on this oath and that oath. I suppose a bit like people today who swear on their mother or their father or whoever it may be his life there. James is saying, don't do this. Don't do this. If you're a true Christian with integrity, then all you have to say is a yes or a no, and people will believe you. The message is so simple. By avoiding lies, deceits, half-truths, and omissions of the truth, you will quickly become known as a trustworthy person. Someone has famously said, to be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. To be trusted is a greater compliment than to be loved. Patience, perseverance, trustworthiness, and integrity. That's what James is addressing in this passage. Now we know patience is key in our Christian lives. We all need more patience. I hope if I was to ask who wants more patience, who needs more patience in their lives, every hand would go up in here. We all need more patience. And so I want to finish today with a story I read this week by a lady called Lou Nichols. And she writes this here. She writes, recently I was waiting in Philadelphia airport on a flight home. Now every half hour, they would tell us that we would get another update in another half hour. I could see the plane was there, 
The crew was there. All the passengers were all definitely there. But the flight just kept getting postponed and pushed back. I must admit that my patience was running low. When we finally boarded and were about to take off, the pilot explained what had taken so long. He said, just before we were about to board you, our mechanics found a problem with two of our tires in a routine maintenance check. We had to replace both the tires. So all of a sudden, every passenger is now grateful for the delay that had been initially so frustrating. Now, there was a good reason for that particular delay, Lou writes. I have to tell you, other airlines don't always have a good reason for their delays. But God always does. If there's a delay in your life at the moment, there's a reason for it. And God has a reason for that. And all we have to do is hold on, be patient, persevere, and push into more of God. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Patience. Let's be patient with everything and everyone we meet today and into this week. When we do that, God blesses us and will be with us in all the conversations and things we have. Be patient, then brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming and stand firm. I'm going to invite Ruth uh, and the praise team up. I'm going to ask them, could we sing the, the third song you did at the beginning again? The... Could we sing that again, please, just quietly and prayerfully, and then lead, lead into the last one there. Is that okay if we could... We could do that. So we're going to sing, uh, what's that one called? It's a new one to me, so it was fantastic. Oh, let the Son of God. Oh, let the Son of God. We'll sing this, and let's just sing this prayerfully. And as we sing this, just reflect in your own life. Do you need more patience? It's something probably we all need there. And Just ask God to grant that prayer, that by a spirit, more and more patience would come in our lives with each other, um, and with those we meet around us there.
as we sing our final song. <coughs> My hope is built on nothing less. <coughs> Is tea and coffee uh, available in the porch there and um, there our prayer ministry team will be here so uh, if anyone uh, needs more patience uh, if anyone has if anything has struck you this morning uh, there's a team of, team of people there so please they're there uh, to be used and are more than happy to to pray with you and for you um, and so let's let's bless each other with the words of the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.